Good morning. I hope you had a fantastic day one here at DevOps Enterprise, and I assure you we have a phenomenal day two in store for you. So this morning, what I'd like to do is give you a glimpse into the making of this conference. I want to share some of our design goals, our program objectives, which shape the programming that you he see here today. I want to share what we've done to help make sure that uh, we can create a community that is mutually exothermic. And I want to talk to you about how we've tried to make it as easy as possible for you to share the talks from this conference with your colleagues and peers. So let's talk about what we want to achieve here in this community. We want to attract people who want to transform their organizations. Uh, organizations have been around for decades or even centuries, and this is a lot of time to fall into bad habits. We want to learn what we need to learn in order to achieve that objective. We want to meet who we need to meet. Uh, and we want to stay re-energized to keep up the fight. I hear from so many people, I come here because I get re-energized about the mission. Yes, I learn new things and meet new people, but I also get the energy I need to fight uh, recalcitrant leaders who not only don't get it, but are actively out <laughs> to sabotage my efforts. And I leave with hopefully enough energy to make it one more year. And so that's certainly one of the objectives uh, within this conference. So what are the goals that we have for DevOps Enterprise 2021? So a couple of years ago was the first time that we explicitly set out a goal that that event will be our best programming ever. And we have continued that tradition for now, I think three, four years. And boy, does it sure change and shape the decisions we make as a program committee. And I do think it's resulted in absolutely outstanding events. In some cases, this forces us to take more risks with fantastic outcomes. In other cases, uh, we choose to play it safer. Sometimes I do get a little bit nervous how we will continue to outdo the previous events, but uh, this has been easier than I thought it would be because the aspirations of this community are so ambitious and so challenging. I feel like all we have to do is find the help that we need to teach us what we need to learn. However, I am confident that this goal forces the programming committee to truly study the needs of this community, and if we keep doing that, I'm sure we will get, all get the outcomes that we want. I'll talk more about why this is so important uh, that every attendee achieves their goals and how we structure the programming to help accommodate that. But first, I want to talk about the programming committee. I'm so grateful to everyone who's been on the programming committee. Uh, everything that you've seen here since the beginning is a result of their work. Uh, so we, we meet weekly for the majority of the year. I asked them to bring their most parochial, selfish goals to the programming. And I think by doing that, we mo help move the entire community forward. So I've talked a little bit about goals and aspirations. So how do we actually translate that into specific programming objectives? So there are a couple of different types of talks here at DevOps Enterprise. So I would talk about experience reports, but there's a special type of experience report that we have called repeat experience reports. This is where we ask technology leaders to come back and continue uh, sharing the story of their journey. By doing this, we get to see how the journey is treating them. Do we like what we see? Is there a path worth following? Is this a pattern of success? So this year, examples of this include Capital One. This time it's Garija Rao, uh, Danae Ferguson, and Jennifer Miles. We have Nationwide Insurance, Steve Farley, VP of Infrastructure and Operations. Comcast, we have Michael Winslow coming back and presenting. And Siemens, uh, Dr. Peter Fassbinder, and Klaus Baumgartner. This represents 10% of all programming. Uh, you can see that we've actually reduced the percentage of repeat experience reports over the year, uh, partially because there are so many great experience reports that people are sharing. But I think this is a very important part of the DevOps Enterprise programming. So that gets us to the other type of experience reports, the new experience reports. So one of the fantastic things about experience reports is that they are a phenomenal way to negate objections. So something that I've heard throughout my entire career is that we can't do X, Y, or Z because, say, we're not a bank. Uh, or if they're a bank, they might say, we can't do X, Y, or Z because we're not a telco. Or if they're a telco, they might say, we can't do it because we're not in retailing. And retailing might say it, uh, that we can't do that because we're not a bank. <laughs> and so uh, over the years, we have nearly 500 experience reports from all industry verticals. And as my friend Jason Cox, who's on the programming committee from Disney, he said, I'm always looking for new experience reports to show my leadership. They'll be able to say, hey, did you know that even this company is doing DevOps? So examples of new experience reports this year include Government of Canada. We had Denise Skinner and Mark Briard present yesterday, National Security Agency. Uh, later today, we'll have Discover Financial Services, eBay, and Sean Mack from Wiley. So these represent about 60% of all programming. Which gets us to one of my favorite types of experience reports, which are those that span the business and technology divide. I mentioned yesterday that we don't want business leaders just 
who acknowledge technology leaders. We want rabid fans who are so grateful because all their goals, dreams, and aspirations are made, being made possible by the incredible work of engineering excellence uh, made possible through technology leadership. So examples of spanning the biz tech divide this year include the amazing presentation that we heard from Target yesterday from Brett Craig, SVP of Digital, and Luke Reddick, Senior Director of Merch Capabilities. And later today, you will hear from Suncor. We're going to hear John Hill, SVP of Digital and Information Technology, uh, co-presenting with Joy Roa, Director of DevOps and Digital Delivery Services, co-presenting with Lindsay DeLuca, Director of Maintenance and Reliability. This is such a cool presentation because they'll also be sharing information on uh, the famous safety culture that they have there. So spanning the biz tech divide, that makes up about 14% of all programming. And uh, in the ideal, this number would be a lot larger. So if you have a story that you can share with a business leader, uh, make sure to uh, contact me. Which gets us to the next category of talks, which are those experience reports talking about overcoming older ways of working. These are or, uh, stories about how people have struggled to and battled with powerful entrenched orthodoxy that you find in large complex organizations. It could be information security or compliance or ITIL or project management uh, or audit. Uh, this often may require building bridges and building mutually respectful and beneficial re relationships with them, or it may also uh, be about out-competing them. These talks represent about 20% of all programming. So that gets us to the last category of talks, which is next generation infrastructure and operations. So the birth of this came from Jason Cox.